Oh, right. Right. Thing. Hold on. Thing. <laughs> Thing. Back to the... There we go. <laughs> Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending August 28th, 2022. Got some kind of uh, weird news for you. We'll start here. Uh, Love Live Superstar Season 2 Episode 8 has been delayed until September 11th due to COVID-19. Still a thing. Still a thing. Um, production schedule changes caused by the spread of COVID-19. Um, so a screening event that would have covered episodes 5 to 8 will now cover only episodes 5 to 7 instead. But they're going to stream a, quote, special stage reading video and recap of season two's episodes one through seven on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, huh. <laughs> Which well, is cool. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, obviously, good on them for, you know, doing whatever they need to do for all the, the medical stuff. Right. But just not what I expected to hear. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, I guess, what would you do? Like, you know, if if there was some medical thing, if if you know, half the staff caught COVID suddenly. Well, you know, it's it's probably better than what Uzumaki is doing with with his thing that the the anime we're supposed to get on Toonami that's never going to show up. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's an apology video going. It, I swear it's coming. It's coming. At least this is you know this is something for the fans. I, I, I guess. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess if they're doing this, uh, if they're basically bringing the actors in to do a stage reading of the script, then at least you kind of have an idea of what's going on in the story. Yeah. You know, I, I guess. It, and and if you're you know a big fan of the voice actress, this might be a a, a squee moment for you. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Absolutely. Um, you know, entirely possible. But you know, it gives me you know ideas of you know maybe you know doing stage readings of oh I don't know Higurashi. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, you know that sounds good to me. Um, Grave of the Fireflies on Ice. Um, oh God. <laughs> oh, let's let's get that. Out no, of our heads. no, um, please, please. Uh, oh, let's get out of our no. heads with um, just some sort of general. Let's do an anime announcement. All right. There's some new anime coming. Um, I got a cheat skill in another world is oh, yeah. coming um, to TV as an anime. Um, full title in English is I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world too. Kind of an interesting isekai twist. A door to another world stretches out before a boy who's been brutally bullied all his life. This alternate reality grants him access to all sorts of things like cheat skills and a portal that lets him travel between his old and new worlds. Mm. Can this class loser turn his life around back home? So apparently he learns stuff in the, in the, in the, in the Isekai world, jumps back into the real world, applies that in the real world. Uh, Back and forth. I, I see so many bad things. Somebody likes it. Um, one and a half million copies of the book franchise in circulation worldwide. The mm -hmm. light novel just released, and the manga's third volume shipped on March 10th. I guess so. I mean, I hope it's not. This isn't going to be like one of those like you know revenge kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hope it's more like. I don't know what I hope, but I hope it's not a revenge thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we've certainly got some worrisome revenge uh, stories yeah. in the past. Um, let me just check to see if there's anything um, new. Same author as The Fruit of Evolution, okay. which I'm not familiar with. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what was the title again? The Fruit of Evolution. The fruit of Evolution. Um, okay. the main character is, uh, in that one, is overweight and bullied. Um, and then his entire school is transported to a isekai video game sword and sorcery world. Uh, he accidentally, accidentally eats the Fruit of Evolution. Oh, I appearance. remember this one. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, he changes his appearance, and he actually looks like he slims down. They slim mm -hmm. him down, and then 
he the first episode is him figuring out that he has to level up and everything and meanwhile uh, his classmates are trying to navigate the world mm-hmm. and he meanwhile he becomes this like uber overpowered thing gotcha. but uh, yeah okay i remember this cool. yeah um so i don't think it's going to be a revenge thank yeah. goodness yeah yeah hopefully definitely doesn't feel like it um let's move on to some just sort of general uh, anime news for now so um spy family the manga has 25 million copies in circulation uh not copies sold but copy is essentially made um it has more than doubled in the last year nice so the anime worked <laughs> yes indeed good for them um indeed a million copies in November 2019, 2 million in January 2020, blah, 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 8 million in December 2020, 10 million in J- June 2021, 21 million in May of 2022. So good for them. And we now have confirmation. Um, uh, the anime's second half is coming October 1st. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So we have that to look forward to. There's a very adorable illustration of Anya and the others. Um, done especially for that to announce that presumably we will have more stories in the uh, uh, more story around the school there um, so looking forward to that um, let's move on to some other stuff um, the second live action full metal alchemist Netflix movie is coming out September 24th full metal alchemist the final alchemy Okay, um, so I saw the first one, and yeah. it and it restored a little bit of hope after after watching um, Death Note and um, <laughs> the live action version Netflix American version of Death Note, which was uh, anyway. Um, aside from the wig problem in okay. the movie, um, <laughs> it, it was actually pretty. Pretty enjoyable, inter- entertaining. Okay. I, I, mm-hmm. I would say that if you had a chance to watch it, go ahead and watch it. Just try not to get distracted by the wigs. The wigs are pretty okay. bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, but beyond that, it, it was actually I wouldn't say it was perfectly in line with, mm-hmm. with the with, with the anime either version. Um, but it did the trick. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I thought I thought it was okay. So I, I, I would yeah. probably watch this. I would probably cool. watch this. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know. Good for them. They can make it work. Maybe maybe the wigs will be better. Maybe it looks be better. Maybe, maybe they figured out the wigs. Um, let's see here. Shall we go? Yeah. Um, there's a new um, UFO Robo Grand Dizer project in the works. Um, there's a video teasing it. Um, project G is what it's part of for next year. Um, the executive producer... Is Go Nagai. Nagai himself is executive producing this Grandizer wow. project. Um, you have a Robo Grandizer was the third installment of the Mazinger giant robot franchise after Mazinger's Dean Great Mazinger. Um, the original Grandizer was in 75, um, was then part of Force 5 right. in uh, America back in the day. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there's a new Grandizer project coming wow. from Go Nagai. Good for him. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious to see how involved he'll be. How involved yeah, he needs to be? I, can he be? No. How old is he now? Um, good question. Um, according to the internet, um, let's see here. He is um, eight, 79? Wow. One in 45. So wow. what, what's my math on that? Um, uh, 77. Is, is, uh, 77. 77. 77, yeah. And granted, Tomino is 80. Yeah. You know, Miyazaki's up there too. So I guess he's, you know, in that in that range. Yeah, perfectly capable then. Perfectly capable. Um, uh, it is hilarious pulling up his uh, ANN page. Um <laughs> Original creator of 5,000 things. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good for him. Hopefully that uh, that works out. I do feel like Mazinger is one of those those franchises that 
I, you know, like Gundam, like there's so much. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> there's so many different series, and then I, I have no idea. Um, fortunately, I, I, I doubt there is as much a crossover and uh, right. Yeah. Stuff. I'll get into whatever you want. Um, the Association of Japanese Animations is an industry group um, that launched this past week um, a website called Anime Taizen, which means Anime Complete Works. It is a an anime database um, commemorating the 100th anniversary of anime. The first historical record of, of animation in Japan is 1917. Um, and so they're, they're commemorating that. The database includes details, including release dates, staff, and voice actors for about 15,000 anime. Oi. It is since nineteen seventeen, and you can search by keywords, names, and dates. Unfortunately, all Japanese. Uh, For us, yeah. Um, Still, but, I would have hated to have been. Hey, Bob, the intern, we got a project for you. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. um, um, the the website had to shut down for the first twenty four hours because it was too popular. Um, so it of got course. got kind of blown uh, out the first time. Uh, they uh, opened it um, as a trial back in October. It's been renovated and updated since then. Um, so it that is quite interesting. And the the operator says they want to make it a comprehensive database, um, yeah. partly because some information has disappeared over time. Like there's there's a lot that does sure. vanish. So wow, yeah, seriously. Um, how many interns died for this project? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll sort of see the the anime behind the making of. Well, it's funny because like in English we have a bunch of these, right? Yeah. Like we have an an n we have anmdb we have all these different things. Um, my anime list. Um, and it's interesting having a an industry association group try to say okay no, no no like there needs to be a more or less official right database um i hope it work I, like i hope it becomes a resource um i don't know I, just, I, I guess for me i feel like i don't know when i would ever reference it yeah i mean i mean it why why mm -hmm. um is is the question but having said why um if if I think it would probably serve better if it was it was a thing that said, and here's the anime that disappeared over time that we found, because mm, yeah. that I would be interested in seeing. Because you know, if it's something that you know we could actually look up and watch, mm -hmm. you know, that would be actually really kind of cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, if only I guess, read Japanese. <laughs> and I guess there are a lot more. Relationships that can be documented um, because the association can potentially know this person worked with you know with this person on this thing and all that kind of stuff and you know there was this um, relationship between these two companies whatever. There's some interesting right. associations possibly there. Thankfully, if you want to go there, it is very easy to remember. They managed to snag AnimeDB.jp <laughs> as their domain name. So there you go, easy to remember. AnimeDB.jp. And you've got your anime database. Um, let's see here. A few other quick notes. Um, Section 23 Films is going to be releasing The Wings of Hori Amise in 4K. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Um, so the. Can you imagine that in the IMAX? Oh, gosh. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, mm. mm. The box will include the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray disc and a regular Blu-ray disc, plus a disc of bonus material. Um, they're collaborating with Bandai Namco to release the Japanese special edition box currently in North America and Japan on November 4th. So that's cool. Uh, we will get that at the same time as Japan. Nice. Um, it'll include um, English subtitles and an English dub. Interestingly, no notes here on which dub. Um, if it's a new dub or whatever, um, there will be a ooh. They'll include an audio version of the pilot film, which has not yet been released in on major disc, um, on high def, um, plus uh, background music and a document file. 
Um, to give you an idea on how seriously they're taking the remaster process, Hiroyuki Yamaga is overseeing the remaster process. He was the director. Wow. <laughs> I um, want it. Yep. They're using an original 35 millimeter master print. Uh, and they'll have a, a they will have a theatrical screening, probably in Japan. Oh. Um, which features the original audio track. Oh. Oh, God. Um, here's the cool thing. Bandai Namco Arts made the announcement of this on March 14th, 2022, exactly 35 years after the movie came in. Wow. Like, well done. Yes. Like, well done. You know, it's a good thing I'm not rich because I gotta tell you, I, I would be. Here's the Gearhart IMAX <laughs> theater. We show nothing but anime. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so I, I do have to make one one addition to this, uh, which is which is in in the description. So this is perhaps the most 1980s thing. Yeah, it is. To, um, uh, 1980s um, note to to make about this. Um, so the film premiered in March 87 in Japan. It's an its initial premiere was actually in Los Angeles a month earlier. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Featuring an English dub by Go East Productions, but it's it's America. You can't call it the Wings of Honey and Mise. Uh, they titled it Star Quest. Uh, <laughs> Star Quest. Uh, I just get, I, 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 I've got this stabbing pain in my abdomen <laughs> right now. Oh, God. Oh, oh, that is just, I, I love that. I love that in every, <laughs> every way. Oh, um, dear Lord. A few other just notes, um, kind of for fun to finish things out. Um, the Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime from Studio Trigger is coming out September 13th on Netflix. Ooh, nice. So yes. if you're interested in that, just a couple of weeks away. For cyberpunk uh edge runners um sadly um we should point out that um motomo kiyokawa passed away um from pneumonia at the age of 87. he was an anime voice actor probably best known for playing kozo fuyutsuki in evangelion mm -hmm. um gendo's right hand man right um, also played walter and helsing uh Ken <gasps> ray in mobile oh, okay so uh, uh amuro's father in mobile Gundam. Gundam. Um, Shime in Time of Eve, Tippi in is, is, is in Is the Order of Rabbit, uh, Norman Berg in Big O, um, Dr. T in Gungrave, um, and Gargoyle in Naughty the Secret of Blue Water, among many others. Mm. So sad to hear. Um, in more positive news, um, the upcoming Royal Shakespeare Company stage version of Monday with Totoro um, has announced its cast. Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. Unfortunately, not so much. Um, Can you imagine Patrick Stewart doing that? Mm. Patrick Stewart mm. as the cat bus. That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, full disclosure, I'm not familiar with any of these names. Um, <laughs> as you point out, uh, May Mack, uh, who played Son in the stage version of Princess Mononoke, um, uh, is, uh, is playing May. Hmm. In this, so that is pretty cool, especially because the, the name thing, May Mac, yeah. May, yeah, very, very cool. Um, so a bunch of puppeteers from um, we puppeteering uh, Jim Henson's puppets as well. Hmm. So hopefully that will uh, come out well, and hopefully we'll get some some cool photos out of that. Yeah, it does seem like a kind of thing that would work uh, pretty well as a stage play. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next week.